Here we're going to go through some of the basic problems you can solve with sequences. This is quite a simple sequence, three, five, seven, nine. And you can probably already tell what the rule for this sequence is. Every time we go to the next number, we are adding two. So this would be called the term to term rule for the sequence. Each of these parts of the sequence, the three, five, the seven, and the nine, these are called terms. The three is the first term, five is the second, the seven is the third, and the nine is the fourth. They're all called terms. You might call them the numbers, but a sequence doesn't have to have numbers. A sequence can have letters if it's algebra, or it could have symbols as well. So if we want to find the fifth term, which at the moment is unknown, we'd have to apply the term to term rule, which as we can see is plus two. So we'd plus two onto the fourth term, so add two to nine, and of course we get 11 as the fifth term. You can work out any term in the sequence this way, but trying to find really, really big terms like the thousands term, well, there's a method for that that we're gonna look at in the next video. But what if I told you that the 50th term of this sequence is 101? Now you could work it out by counting up, eventually you'd get there, but I'll just tell you that's 101. What would the 51st term B. Well, I hope you've thought about that and realised that to get to the next term, you just have to add two. That rule is the same all the way through the sequence. So therefore, the 51st term is going to be 101, add two, 103. You could also work out the 49th term using a similar rule. Well, the 49th term is the one before the 50th, and that was 101. So to get the 49th term, you have to go back. That would mean subtracting two. So actually you get 99. What if I asked you what the difference between the let's say the 25th and 30th terms of the sequence would be. Now the answer is not five. I'm not asking for the difference between 25 and 30, the 25th term and the 30th term. Well, how many terms, how many parts of the sequence are there between these two? Well, there's five parts of the sequence, so there's five numbers we'd have to count up. And what's the difference between each one of those? Well, if we just put some blank spaces, we don't know what these numbers are. I guess we could work them out, but we're not going to have to do that. This is the 25th term. And this will be the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. And here's the 30th term there. How many times have we had to apply the rule to get there? Well, you probably saw it straight away. There's five steps. There's five terms between these two. So it means we have to add two each time we take a step. That means we're adding two five times. That means the difference will be five lots of two, which is 10. One final question, just for this introductory part that you might have to answer, is something like this. I'll give you a number, let's say 78. Is 78 in this sequence? Well, let's have a look at their numbers again. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. And it's going up in twos. Can we predict whether we see 78? Is there a way of being able to tell? Well, for more complicated ones, there is a method we're going to use with algebra. We'll see that later. For this one, we just have to spot the pattern here. The pattern with these is that they're all just odd numbers. And 78, well, it's not an odd number, is it? So, no, I don't think we're going to see that in the sequence. And not all sequences are this similar, oh, this simple, sorry. You'll see some similar ones, but 
Maybe the sequence has a more complicated rule, but they'll always have some sort of pattern. And you can use that to work out whether you will see certain numbers or not. OK, having looked at those questions, try the questions that I'm posting on the class notebook and ask if you have any problems with those.